good afternoon. Our lecture for this afternoon would be on sources of data. Learning outcomes for this lecture would be to differentiate the sources of data used in biostatistics and how they are collected. Explain the advantages and disadvantages of the different sources of data. And to identify the appropriate sources of data for the objective set in a sample investigation. So sources of data could either be primary or secondary. So in primary data, original data is collected by the investigator collected specifically to aid the investigator in answering the different objectives or purposes he has set for his study. These are your sources for primary data. Direct personal interview. So data is personally collected by the interviewer. Indirect oral investigation. Data is collected from third parties who have information about subject of inquiry. Information from correspondents. Data is collected from agents appointed in the area of investigation. Mail questionnaire. Data is collected through questionnaires. So this would be a list of questions that would be mailed to the informant. Questionnaire filled by enumerators. Data is collected by trained enumerators who fill up the questionnaires. And telephonic interviews. Data is collected through an interview over the telephone with the interviewer. A list of questions would be your questionnaire. So it has to be undergo a pilot test, which is a small scale trial where a few examinees take the test and comment on the mechanics of the test or questionnaire. Usually, Problems are pointed out with the test instructions or instances where items are not clear or ambiguous and formatting or other typographical errors and other issues are pointed out. The qualities of a good questionnaire would that it be contains a cover letter with objectives and scope of survey. It would have a minimum number of questions, avoids personal questions, clear and simple, and follows a logically arranged manner. Census versus sampling. Census and sampling are different methods in getting data. So for census, every unit of the population is studied, reliable and accurate results, but expensive, and suitable only when the population is of homogeneous nature. For sampling, a few units of the population are studied, less reliable and accurate results, less expensive method, and suitable when population is of heterogeneous nature. We will learn more of sampling in our latter lectures. So this is personal interview method. I want you to observe the picture very closely and we will discuss this more thoroughly during our live session. But for now, advantages and disadvantages of personal interview method would be a higher response rate. It allows all types of questions and allows clearing doubts regarding questions. This advantage would be this would be also an expensive method and informants can be influenced. So there's a thing called facipulation where you could manipulate and facilitate your answers out of your interviewee. It, it takes more time. So this would be your mail questionnaire method. Advantage and disadvantages would be it would be the least expensive and the only method that could reach your remote areas. But informants can be influenced as well. So disadvantages, long response time, it will depend on when your 
mail or email will be read and cannot be used by the illiterates or the visually impaired. Doubts cannot be cleared with regards to questions. So this is your telephone interview. The advantages and disadvantage would be the relatively low cost, relatively high response rate, less influence on the informants. Disadvantages would be the limited use. Reactions cannot be watched. So for secondary data, so data collected by someone and used by the investigator, data may have been collected for a different purpose. So your sources could be published or unpublished. So published sources would be government publications, journals, magazines, and print media. Unpublished sources would be the census, civil registry, clinic records, medical records, etc. So for Texarkana, so this would be a measles in a divided city. So on Tuesday, November 3, in the CDC received a weekly surveillance data from Texas State. So it said that 319 cases of measles in the state during the previous week was reported. On the average, 26 cases per week for the previous four weeks were reported. So 295 cases of measles had been diagnosed in Texarkana, including 25 in children reportedly to have been previously immunized. So we have to investigate the situation and extend it to CDC November 4th up to November 5th. So if you were the investigator, your task is to locate and identify the possible measles cases reported in Texarkana. So where and how will you get the information that you need? So will you use a questionnaire or ask from the following? School, clinic, class attendance, ER records, known patients, etc. Um, look at this example. We will further discuss this during our live discussion. So sources of data on health. So other sources would be census, your civil registries of vital statistics, reports of occurrence of notifiable disease, records kept to a subject's name on different aspects of his life, rural health unit records, health-related records from laboratories, pharmacies, blood banking centers, and private practitioners, statistical publications by agencies dealing with health, registers of certain diseases deemed to be of public health importance, and surveillance records of selected diseases. So census would be the best source of data on population characteristics such as age distribution, usually these are your demographic particulars, gender, marital status, area of residency, literacy, occupation, etc. Uses would be it could assist in planning, denominators for indices for health, administrative, and political. So there is a civil registry of vital statistics so this is a continuous permanent compulsory recording of the occurrence and characteristics of vital events such as births, deaths, and marriage. So there are reports of occurrence of notifiable diseases. This is RA3573. 
So this is data on notifiable diseases is based on information submitted by health personnel. So these are the notifiable diseases that should be reported within 24 hours. So acute flaccid paralysis for polio, any adverse effect following immunization, anthrax, avian influenza, measles, meningococcal disease, neonatal tetanus, paralytic shellfish poisoning, rabies, severe acute respiratory syndrome, outbreaks, clusters of diseases, and unusual diseases or threats. Within a week, you should be able to notify diseases such as acute bloody diarrhea, acute encephalitis syndrome, acute hemorrhagic fever syndrome, acute viral hepatitis, bacterial meningitis, cholera, dengue, diphtheria, influenza-like illness, leptospirosis, malaria, non-neonatal tetanus, pertussis, typhoid, and paratyphoid fever. So mortality data sources would be your vital registration system, national sample surveys, special health surveys, hospital records, notification of infectious diseases. So records kept to a subject's name on different aspects of his life. So this would be sensitive data that you should protect. Birth certificates, school records, employment insurance records, medical charts, and death certificates. Rural health unit records would be also sources of data. And they maintain family records and not individual records. They keep information on all members of a family and are updated whenever a member visits the health facility. So in most facilities, they have general log books which list all consultations, admissions, discharges, and referral for the day. So of course, other information would be seen in social media and hence you should guard your information with your life. Okay, thank you for listening to this lecture. Subscribe to my channel for more lectures on preventive medicine and community health one. Thank you.